Viteita and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Federico Avian Borgmaier. Olena, uh, you've made it again. Eh? Uh, amazing sight. Uh, if everyone who's not here could see what we're seeing here right now, it's a crowd, it's a packed uh, community of. Uh, um, of people that I've seen last year in, in, in Krakow and back again here, but also new ones, new faces. Um, I would like to uh, drive you through today through uh, what is the current stage um, or status of AI in financial institutions. Uh, it was a long time ago since I started in this, uh, in this particular space. Uh, I would have to go back into the late 1980s, so this is a long time ago. Um, by then, um, I was uh, working as a uh, visiting scholar at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign, that's uh, a little bit south of Chicago, and um, I, was, uh, I was a visiting scholar from Technical University of Berlin. And, um, and my professor told me, uh, Federico, why don't you go to University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and do some research for us? And I said, what, what is the research all about? I'm an industrial engineer, so and doing economics and doing engineering. And he said, well, <clears throat> why don't you research on artificial intelligence? Okay, we're talking 1980s. Um, and, uh, and my teacher was from the marketing department. <laughs> uh, so um, I thought, okay, what can I do with artificial intelligence and marketing? Maybe, well, linking the two, right? Uh, so back in 1980s, so I did my my thesis uh, and, uh, on, on, on that sub subject matter after meeting a bunch of uh, super smart people at the Unif University of Illinois, went back to Technik uh, Technische Universität, Universität Berlin, uh, wanted to go into, um, into my PhD on that particular super interesting subject matter, but as things turn out in life, they change, you know, and so I decided to become something different, um, a consultant, and, uh, and now I ended up well, with EFCOM after many years in doing that. But how, why I'm talking about AI right now? Because 10 years, um, 10 years ago, yep, 10 years ago, my friend Jose uh, Moreira from, um, from Barcelona, who was then working at Aplicaciones Informáticas Avanzadas, uh -huh. uh, so um, advanced uh, computer science applications, um, called me up and said, Federico, you know, I'm, I'm working I'm working with this company right now, and I said, so what do you guys do? I mean, what does that mean? Well, we're doing, um, you know, we're doing something with factoring. Uh-huh, okay. Hmm, what else? Uh, well, we're doing that with, uh, with artificial intelligence, algorithmic, and something triggered in, in myself, and uh, I was kind of taken back into, into the 1980s, and I, you're doing AI? Yeah, and we're doing AI uh, since 25 years. Oh, my God. I need to know more about that. And uh, so Jose uh, told me what they were doing. So factoring was really not so important for me, but AI was super important. And, uh, and so he, he told me, why don't you come to Barcelona and we show you what we're doing? Uh, so I went to Barcelona. I saw what these guys were doing. It was super exciting. And I said, um, are, you, are you guys represented in Germany already? He said, no. Um, okay, let me do that for you because it's not so easy for a Spanish company selling AI into Germany, you know, they won't believe that. They, you guys are known for very good wine, very good ham, very good sun and uh, tourism, whatever, but AI algorithmic, I don't think so. So let me, let me get that straight and, and, and represent you in Germany. And so that's, that's how my life started with AI and factoring 10 years ago. And um, I thought it was gonna be a piece of cake selling that in, in, in Germany. Um, but uh, it wasn't. So when I called up the first 10 banks and I told them, hey, I have this super, super application for you, super smart, um, it will solve all your problems, um, but uh, cooking coffee, you know? So um, let's, let's get in touch and talk about it. And they all said, well, we all have that already. Uh, we have that already. Um, and what do you mean by that? Well, there is this company called Fcom that does it, okay? Second company, Fcom, Fcom, Fcom. Who's Fcom? So I, I looked at the, at the website, where's Fcom? And Fcom was close to my office. Close, 10, 20 kilometers. Uh, so I said, I, I'm, I'm gonna call them up because I don't believe that. And uh, so I talked to Bodo Reinecke, one of the founders, and he said, 
Uh, you know what you're telling me? We do a lot of things, but what you're doing, we're not doing. So that's why we, how we came in touch. And, um, and that's why I'm standing here today. Okay, let's go into my presentation. How AI changes financial institutions. First of all, I need your help. Take out your mobile phones. Uh, you already have yours in your hand. <laughs> and why don't you go into menti.com and enter the code 31949486. By the way, this applies also to everyone who's not joining us in presence here today. Everyone who's remotely attending us, please go in there um, and, uh, and answer the first question. How many full AI implementations have been undertaken in your organization? You don't see that question. You, you would see that uh, when, you, when you type in menti.com, 31949486. And now we can, can have the developing results on the screen. Maybe we, we can do that from there. Something is not working. Ah, the number has changed. <laughs> OK, so here we go. Please take note, also the ones that are remote. 2660-8869. Again, 2660-8869. Now it should work. I have no idea what happened. Aha. <laughs> uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm seeing the results here. Uh, can we see the results on the screen as well? What I have asked everyone uh, between zero, which is none, and more than 10, uh, we are now at 3.5. Uh, we have 38 people answering. Uh, we'll give them um, maybe one or two more seconds, and then we go. Hmm? Menti.com 2660-8869. Okay, it's a 3.4, as we can see. Um, that's not much between zero and more than 10. But let's keep that number in mind, please. I switch to the next slide. Maybe we can move to the next one, please. And uh, what you need to do right now is to go to the next question. So 3.6. And the next question would be, how was the fina financial return on your AI investment so far? We may want to look at that one as well. So 3.6, oh, the average is going up, mm -hmm. that's good. 29, 31, can we show the results also, please, of the second? Eight point five. so we have a few nils in here, we have a peak over here. Uh, we're at 8.5. So we have of, uh, a little bit of everything and an average of 8.5. So let's keep that in mind. Um, 3.6 and 8.5. Okay, now we go back to presentation. And um, according to, um, who is this? Deloitte. Uh, according to Deloitte, uh, AI front runners are, enjoy highest returns. Um, and that means when they do a lot of AI initiatives, of course, um, that means 10 and more, 
Um, enjoying 30, 30 plus, 30 plus um, um, uh, return on investment. And now the question for you is, um, if we look at this uh, particular score here, uh, whether you're over here or whether you are over here. So um, front runners are the ones that are investing heavily in, in, in AI and getting, getting the returns for it. And now the question for you, independently of uh, what the group did, because we did 8.5 and uh, uh, 3.6, so we should be somewhere over here. We're in the starting phase. At least uh, the community that is visiting us today and that's present here today, um, this is the numbers that we are seeing right now. Okay? Um, but maybe we want to like or would like to move into, into being front runners uh, and not starters or followers, but leading the pace. Uh, what else? Um, AI in financial services is primarily used to improve efficiency and reduce cost. So this is what we have been seeing uh, as well when we talk to organizations. Where would you use today um, artificial intelligence? Well, in improving efficiency and reducing, uh, and reducing cost. And uh, as a marketing person, I always wondered uh, why, why we're not moving more into developing uh, new business models or expansion and securing markets. Um, it's not yet seen. And yet, um, this, is, this is a big strength of artificial intelligence as well. It's not only reducing cost and uh, making us more efficient, but also creating new models. And maybe um, you will be thinking as well, why not also new business models are important or possible with AI? Um, when we look at what we have been doing, and uh, I'm going back to the last 10 years uh, when, uh, when, 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 I, when I met Jose back again, um, and he came to me uh, with this particular application saying, um, matching payments with open invoices, and I said, uh, why would that be a big, a big deal, uh, Jose? Why is matching the data uh, so difficult? He said, well, very good, because in, in factoring, uh, you know, you're not just uh, getting one invoice per day, you're getting hundreds, uh, thousands, millions. And, uh, and if the payments are, are getting in are not matched automatically, then someone's got to do it. And uh, <clears throat> he brought up this particular case. Ah, here. Banco Sabadell. Um, bank from Catalonia. Um, that they happen to have that particular problem. So uh, they had three persons uh, working in, in that department doing the matching of invoices and payments, open invoices and payments. Um, and uh, what happened is that they, <clears throat> uh, they lost two of their staff due to maternity and one got sick. So the three of them were not there anymore. And uh, matching invoices and payments didn't happen anymore. So um, then the, um, the, the person in charge of uh, factoring came to us, in, or to Aplicaciones Informáticas in those days, and said, uh, how can we do this uh, so that we don't have to rely on, on people? Because this can happen all the time. And uh, the, so we developed an application. And this application does it now for you. Um, so uh, the manual intervention, uh, meaning that you have to match invoices and payments, uh, which is in on average, talking average, 50%, uh, increase that to over 90%. Hmm, that's a number if you have a lot of payments to do or a lot of invoices. Um, another one which is an interesting case, and by the way, these are the clients who are using the system uh, down there. Um, smart cash flow. Um, if you capture, um, if you want to capture new small and medium enterprises in your organization, um, then um, Oh, I have 30 seconds to go. Gee, I have to speed up. Um, so then, um, then this is a pot possibility to do that, because uh, in online banking, um, they may well see what their, uh, what their cash flow is. And if their cash flow is negative, then you can capture new clients for, for factoring. So this is an opportunity. And the third one, this is coming out uh, probably next year, uh, predictive client behavior. Um, we have a team right now working on this particular topic, super exciting, how our clients are behaving. And, um, and, and that information is of big value to, uh, to the factors. So stay tuned. We'll talk about that next year. Let's go to Menti again. You know the number. 
So why hasn't AI made it yet into the financial services? What's your opinion? <laughs> Choose the one that you like most, sorry. <laughs> or the one that fits most. Maybe we can see the results also, please, on the screen. I didn't really mean to have it in that, uh, in that order, but uh, it's for some reason... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it came like that. So my first question was uh, lack of trust or in AI benefits, then lack of uh, AI skills of employees, and so it goes. <coughs> it was meant to be like in this direction, but it happens uh, for some reason that this is the, the one um, that you are choosing. Any more? 14 respondents so far. Um, interestingly enough, um, this pretty much coincides uh, uh, with uh, the results of a survey from PwC um, and uh, lack of available data. And uh, this is what many many organizations say, you know. Um, and, uh, and, and, and in spite of organization, financial organizations really having, I don't know, so much data. Uh, now the question is, of course, is it the real data? Is it the important data? Um, but data. I don't think that financial institutions lack data. What is most likely the case is lack of management support, because this is what we're seeing when we talk to uh, organizations. Um, they don't see it, they don't believe it, um, and they don't understand it. Uh, so there is a lot of um, talking that needs to be done still in spite of 21st century and AI not being here uh, since yesterday, but it's a big black box, right? And um, which is the last one. Um, lack of transparency of AI algorithmic, let's call it, nobody really understands them, but uh, it's a black box. Okay, so we need to do a lot of uh, convincing in here that AI is not so bad. Thank you very much. <laughs>